Mm. Um, we did. We didn't really cover this, but what did you guys think of um, the Tywin over and um, Ilaria Sand Cersei one? Oh, that was that was very good. good. <laughs> yeah, he's so brazen. Classic. He's... <laughs> He, yeah, he's the great. next queen regent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Former ten thousand of the of the um the sands in dawn. <laughs> nobody, yeah, nobody talks to Tywin like that. So you can just see how like bold and how how attracted to danger the Red Viper is. Now, what did you guys mm-hmm. think of Alaria's um costume? <laughs> no complaints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I mean, in in the world of uh, Game of Thrones costumes, that 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 Marjorie's various uh, interesting dresses. This is it's it fits. <laughs> it's very bold, though. I mean, Marjorie's had revealing dresses, but this is literally like she's wearing a sparkly bra. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's very modern. Yeah, it goes with the kind of the, the liberation, I guess, that the Dornish enjoy. <laughs> 21st century clothing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, it's hot in Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> you got to breathe. <laughs> I love, yeah, I, the costumes are pretty cool. Like, I liked Marjorie's one with all the thorns on it. And um, if you look behind the, the sort of tapestry behind uh, Joffrey and Marjorie, there's these cool patterns where it's the sigils of the Baratheons and the Lannisters and the Martells. But sort of winding its way between all the sigils is thorns, so it kind of shows how the, the Tyrells are, I don't know, um, getting their influence all over the city. Mm, I like the way um, Oberyn um, brought up Macella. It was a nice reminder that they do have Macella down in Dawn, because I think a lot of people might have forgotten that, and if they're going to do anything with that next season, I think it, like it's good to remind everyone that, you know, she's the Dawnish, do have her. And they're treating her all right at the moment. Yeah, it's 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 a complex story. Um, there's a lot of callbacks to seasons two from last episode. There's there's like a whole history at this point to this world. So it's, it's cool that they're uh, they're trusting viewers enough, I guess, to sort of try and keep up. Yeah. Do we want to move on to the um the final death scene, or are we have we missed anything that you guys um, really want Brian. to talk about? Brian. Yes, Brian. Yes, um, Joffrey actually being <laughs> relatively polite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sure. Do you reckon he even knows that uh, she's a girl? Because I don't <laughs> yeah, know if he's that observant. I think observant. so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> maybe he's just kind of impressed with how huge she is. Yeah. It's like maybe he wants her as like the the next hound or something. Yeah, maybe he's like, oh, she could, she could probably hit me pretty hard. Maybe maybe I won't give her crap. Yeah, he kind of <laughs> one of the few things he respects is like martial prowess. Right. It's true. I think would he's... have knighted her yeah, yeah, yeah. if um, she were a man. <laughs> <laughs> and he started out thinking that she killed Randy too, so she he might yeah really <laughs> well close towards him. I don't know. I yeah. I kind of love how his attention span is so short. He'll get into a conversation and then just lose interest in like ten seconds. He's such a <clears throat> petulant little kid. Um, it's it's cool. It's, it's almost like he has this enormous victory, and this wedding is very much like a monument to the to the victory of the Lannisters and Joffrey and the War of the Five Kings. But he's not really enjoying it. He's like watching them play uh, the Reigns of Castamere, and he kind of gets annoyed and just throws coins at them. It's, it's kind it's of Mar- it's because satisf- Marjorie looks bored. Anytime that she looks like she's <laughs> pretending, like she might be just politely interested, but anytime she like put her elbow on the table or kind of looked a bit bored, he was like, no, no, he's not um. This isn't in- entertaining my queen next. True. She's got him wound around her finger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Marjorie's yeah, potentially one of the... Uh, I, I like her more than the book Marjorie even. She's really yeah. a player. She knows what she knows but how the to act, The actress Natalie Dormer is doing a fantastic job with her. Yeah. yeah. And throughout this, especially throughout this wedding feast, how, how she can just turn from annoyed to try, trying to please Joffrey with a nice smile. Trying to play with him. I like the um, AV club <laughs> described her as like a really perky game show host because whenever Joffrey, <laughs> whenever Joffrey's going off on like a ranch, he's like, "Oh, look, the pie's here." <laughs> she keeps trying to make oh, everything happy. Hi, my love, come here. Jeez, like, oh. yeah. <laughs> fine. Um, yeah. So I, I loved the um, the giant lion that the dwarves rode out of. I thought that was um, beautiful, not tacky at all. <laughs> You're being sarcastic. Yes. Is it not coming across? Do I need to work on my sarcasm? Too subtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need some work. Looked like something sarcasm. out of like modern carnival. Yeah, it looks out of place. So Strange material. Doesn't Strange like... considering he's universally considered a Baratheon, at least officially. True, but yeah. yeah. 
but they've been trying to work in the Lannister angle for a while. Like his banner is a lion and a stag. Yeah, it's almost oh, like already? everyone everyone knows okay. he's a bastard, but they all just pretend that he's not. It's all part of the, the narrative that they. It's like the lie they agree to. Yeah, mm, yep. I love um Loris's little bitch slap to um Jamie, where Jamie's like, "You won't be able to marry her," and Loris is like, "Neither are you." Neither are you, buddy. <laughs> I know so many great interactions. It's like one of the few times we've had all the the main characters in the same place. So it was a cool yeah. cool scene of just sitting and talking, um, and then it all yeah comes to a head, I guess, in one of the greatest moments in television history. And there's already yes. like reaction reaction <laughs> videos. Uh, all over the internet, and right. it, it's it's amazing because it's happened in episode two. Uh, but yeah, Joffrey Lannister, called Baratheon or Joffrey Waters, I guess as he should be called, is dead, full in the face. Gruesome. Yeah. Awesome. I love how they had um. I love how they had everyone handle the cup though. Like there was enough yeah. people, you know, Queen of Thorns was near it, Tyrion had it, um, then he dropped it and Sansa picked it up, and then Marjorie held it while he was eating the pie. Marjorie you know, feeding pie. Yeah, Marjorie feeding him pie, which I've always believed it was the pie that got him, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that's always been my secret you. belief. Or, and that Garland was the one that that um that did him in, but and which is which I found unusual because they wrote him out of the show, so I'm guessing that must mean that it was Queen of Thorns. I reckon it was Tommen. <laughs> he didn't have a single line. He wanted to be king and he yep. took it. He wanted a line in the show and he's like, I know how to get I'll better the king. You fools. <laughs> this is my throne now. <laughs> you don't just recast me and then not give me a line. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah, he didn't have any lines, but he was pretty prominent. Like he was always sitting next to Tyrion and there's a nice little moment where he starts laughing at the at the dwarves, but then he sees that Tyrion's uncomfortable and he stops. So nice little nod that he is he's an, he's not Joffrey. He does have empathy. He's like a nice person, basically. Which is good. Will he play with kittens though? Hopefully. <laughs> a bit old to be playing. He seems a bit old. He seems like thirteen or fourteen. I think it's he the same actor that played one of the hostages um, yeah. that Rob had. Maybe he'll be a little bit development mentally delayed delayed because of the inbreeding and you'll play with kittens <laughs> who knows um they'll play with kittens <laughs> yeah <laughs> you might not be as cute seeing a 15 year old playing with kittens <laughs> um so we have what was the um what provoked joffrey to pour the wine over Tyrion again i can't remember he said uh joffrey said why don't you put on a costume ah uh, yep go on the play and then joffrey's like oh maybe you should go i'm, I'm like a first-hand account to how bravely you were on the battle of the black Forder. and everyone but, knows he ran ran back to his mother but and, beware uh, that guy looks rather lusty i'd hate you for you to lose your virtue or something like that. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and everyone sniggers and he's it was a good one I don't know if that was from the book, but a similar kind of sentiment was in the book or something. Or he yeah, said, yeah, like, something yeah, like Tyrion, that. Yeah, Tyrion, didn't he say something along the lines of only if you ride the dog? Yeah, like, you're the only one I have a chance of beating or something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's interesting because it, it Martin actually the... wrote this episode, so he's changed some of the stuff, just right. trying out new lines and stuff, I guess. <laughs> he's going to his all his alternates from um, when he wrote Storm Swords. He's like, oh, well, I'll use this one because I didn't get to use it and I loved it the first time. This, but this was the ultimate send-off for Joffrey. This was just like a monument to his like cruelty and insanity and craziness. And everyone was just sitting there, watching in horror at the king they had fought a war to, to put on the throne. It's, it's great because so many of these characters have never really known Joffrey. He's only ever been like an idea to them. They've heard rumors about his cruelty, but having to sit there all in the same place and watch the kind of the horror as he slowly kicks it up to 11 of who he is and who they're going to have to serve for the next 20, 30 years. And I think at that, at that point, everyone had pretty much decided this kid has to go. Yeah. Yeah. I do have to say, Oh, sorry, you go. And uh, I mean, it sets up the mystery of the, at the end of the episode, excellently because everybody literally has a motive to kill Joffrey at that very moment. And, and it, it turns, I guess, turns Game of Thrones into something complete. It has never been into a mystery mm. show. Yeah, the trial and, could and be it, really cool. Yeah. And gener- it's generating this sort of discussion that, I mean, the, the Red Wedding was something that made and um, just destroy the internet. But it's really hard to sort of respond or talk about a Red Wedding other than that was horrific. But here, it, it's 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 creating massive forum and like people among among the unsullied, I guess, massive amount of discussion. Oh, who did this? I think it's if it's her, it's him. I think it's her, and, and 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 it's 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 really making Game of Thrones into, I guess, the a sensation that it was it, the kind of sensation it wasn't before. So I think I feel like the writing this series was in in this episode, especially over there, was really was really spectacular. Definitely George's best written episode of the ones he's done. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. So what he did? He did Blackwater. Um, he did episode seven. Yeah. Oh three. yeah, Black Blackwater. Yeah, I forgot about that. It doesn't think, feel like he would have. Re- it's such an action-packed scene, though. It didn't feel like it would have relied as heavily on his writing, whereas every little detail of this episode really relied on being well planned out and well thought. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. The best episodes seem to be ones that focus on a specific location or event, whether it's the right. wedding or the battle or the red wedding or um, Ned's execution. And that seems to be where it's strongest, where people are coming together in conflicts mm-hmm. rather than just these these episodes where it's like five minutes of this character, five minutes of this character, five minutes of this character, yeah. see you next week. And even it's the same <laughs> in the books as well. The best chapters in the books are the ones where, you know, Sam meets Arya and Bravos, you know, those, mm-hmm. those are the ones that are exciting to read because you just don't know mm-hmm. what's going to happen. Um, so it's great that, you know, the show can still do that and, and has more opportunity to do that than what they do in the books. Yeah, there was a really cool article yeah. from the an interview with the director and the writer of this episode, or one of them, maybe he wrote, yeah. But he was talking about how this is nothing compared to what's going to happen for the rest of the season. This is going to be one of the most action-packed <laughs> season in, in probably ever. Like, having read book three, we know this is where everything happens. So the trial's yeah. going to be awesome, um, but yeah. I kind of wish someone on the forum mentioned that it kind of would have been cool if Sansa had got down to the docks and you just see the final shot is just Littlefinger sitting there smirking. Um, <laughs> but but I, I, I do like the idea that it's a complete mystery. As well. That would be right. funny, but I would have liked to have seen Sansa just run off um, without prompting from Dantos and... Tyrion wondering where Sansa has gone. That yeah. sort of image being the last thing you see. There was a nice bit of solidarity where she picks up the the thing for him. Like I know they never really could have been husband and wife the way uh, maybe fans wanted or whatever, but it, there was something like they were both kind of victims of Joffrey, and there was a bit of sympathy between the two, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, as I said before, I do wish Sansa had a had a bit more agency. Like obviously she couldn't partake in in Joffrey's downfall, but maybe been actively engaged with Dantos from season three or middle of season two, trying to arrange the escape, and Dantos is making veiled threats that Joffrey's time is coming to an end. But I don't know. I guess we we just have to live with what we get. But yeah, hopefully. Sansa it can come into a bit more of her own when she uh, leaves King's Landing. Um, yeah. Yep, so I guess more the only on the... thing we haven't covered is actual choking. I yeah. Mean, uh, graphic. It was, um, I think it fulfilled a lot of people's, like a lot of people probably <laughs> wanted his torture to be at the hands of Ramsey Bolton or something. But, um, but it was pretty, you know, maybe it's not a good thing to say, but it was a little bit satisfying to see him get such a grisly end considering how many lives he's torn apart and how much better the realm will be now that he's gone. Right. They, will, they need to win right. some um, makeup yeah. awards for that one, I reckon. Yeah, he looked like a well, actually, white, I think, he looked like I, actually, a white read... sort of, with the blue eyes. and yeah. It's a bit less read... subtle than the books uh, with him bleeding out as well. It doesn't, in the books, doesn't he like claw his own throat out or something? He tries, That's... yeah. Yeah, crazy. Quick, perform a tracheotomy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a nice... I don't know if it would work. Yeah. But, so you reckon some people think that it might have been the pigeon pie and not poison? I've always believed that because he started coughing before he drank the wine. Right, okay. And I he don't... drinks the wine because his throat's dry, but maybe the pie was what was making his throat constrict, not the wine. Because they have that close-up on the dead pigeon. Um... Yeah, and they put the pie at Tyrion's plate, in, in the books anyway, they put the pie on Tyrion's plate, and then Tyrion's off doing stuff with Joffrey, and then Joffrey goes across and starts eating Tyrion's pie, Tyrion's plate. So I've always had a theory that Tyrion was the intended target. It's probably wrong. It's my tinfoil theory. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't read that chapter in a while, but um, but don't they like open up Joffrey and his his throat's not um, obstructed? No pie. Okay. No pie. But he was eating pie when what he was choking. So yeah, it's funny the idea that he could have just died by accident. And <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the like main theory um, that it was the Queen of Thorns and with um, with the uh, Littlefinger's help or something? Like they made a deal at uh, Bitterbridge or something. Yeah, I'm uh, guessing, I'm guessing the, that's in, it. in the books, yeah. In the books, yeah. it was, yeah, the Queen of Florence with Littlefinger. Um, right now, I mean, on the internet, it's most, a lot, a lot of people pick, picked out Elena, but um, some people still think it's Martel. Um, some people think it's uh, it, it's Sansa, actually. Sansa's actually getting a lot of uh, mention as a potential murderer of Joffrey. Interesting, because she does come with, up as a suspect once she's gone. And uh, Yeah, they say it was her and Tyrion in cahoots, yeah. Right. I think uh, Marjorie. Marjorie's also getting a lot more, a lot of mention as a potential perpetrator, which I mm-hmm. could actually play. Which, which I mean, we don't, we we know what it's 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 uh, suggested in the books, 
but we don't know exactly if the series would play exact play 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 that out exactly. 